Hi, in this video I would like to describe how the scientist Fizzo measured the speed of light. So he took a beam of light coming from a light source, made it travel 8.6 kilometers up to a mirror and back again another 8.6 kilometers. And that kind of large distance was needed to measure the speed of light. So we start with a light source at the bottom and the light passes through a convex lens which converges the beam of light on an inclined plate, a glass plate, which partially reflects that beam. After that, the beams get reflected from the glass plate, pass through the gaps between the teeth of a rotating gear and strike a convex lens too. The gear teeth is placed at the focal length of the lens too. Therefore, the lens too once again makes the beams parallel to the principal axis. And you can see those beams going all the way towards a convex lens number 3 in the distance. The distance is actually 8.6 miles. And then the convex lens 3 focuses that beam onto a plane mirror. Now from the mirror, the light will retrace its steps and be on a return journey towards the gear teeth. Now you can see the beams getting reflected from the glass plate passing through the gaps in the gear teeth as the gear rotates, striking the lens too, becoming parallel to the principal axis, traveling towards lens 3 and then getting focused on to a plane mirror or a concave mirror and then the red beam retraces its steps and comes back to the glass plate. This time it passes through the glass plate, strikes lens number 4 and again becomes parallel to the principal axis. On the left hand side we have a telescope and we would be looking at the whole thing from behind the telescope. Sometimes we will see light if it has passed through the gap. Sometimes we will not see light if it is blocked by the teeth of the gear. In this still image you can see more clearly the path traced by the light beam from the source up to the mirror and back to the glass plate. In this still image, you can see that the return path of light has passed through the glass plate and struck the convex lens number 4 on the left hand side. The beam is shown as yellow only for the purpose of visibility vis-a-vis -vis the red beam. In this isometric image, you can see how the light reflecting from the glass plate passes through the gaps between the teeth of the rotating gear and only then it can strike the convex lens number two. Here is a typical 2D textbook style sketch of the light beam starting from the lamp and going on its onward journey to the mirror on the right. And then the light beam retraces its steps on the return journey and reaches the glass plate. This image shows the return journey beyond the glass plate and hitting the convex lens number four and becoming a parallel beam after that. So the principle of the Fizeau method is that the light emanating from the glass plate will go past a gap between the teeth on the way to the mirror. That's the onward journey. On the return journey, if the light again finds a gap, of course it will come right up to the telescope and we can see it. But on the return journey, if it strikes the gear teeth, it will get blocked and we won't see light. Therefore, the speed of this rotating gear is increased gradually till we do not see light at the telescope end. Initially, when the speed is low, we will see a flickering light. And as the speed is increased for the gear, we will just see a speed where the light stops. Let omega be the angular velocity of the gear at the increased speed when light just stops coming into the telescope and we don't see the light. And let n be equal to the number of teeth in the gear. The critical thing here is, if there are n teeth, there are also n gaps. So a full circle comprises of two n things, teeth plus gaps, and that's the full circumference. Therefore, two pi radians is covered by two n things. Therefore, one teeth will cover an angular displacement of theta is equal to two pi divided by two n things when a teeth moves into the position of a gap and blocks the light. The key for this derivation is a teeth moves into the position of the earlier gap. Now the time taken for this small rotation for a teeth into a gap zone is time is equal to displacement by speed that's equal to theta divided by omega and that becomes 2 pi by 2n divided by omega that's pi by n omega. 
Now, meanwhile, the light beam has traveled D in the onward direction towards the mirror and again back D till the gear teeth. So that's a 2D distance from the gear teeth to the mirror and back from the mirror to the gear teeth. So then we apply the simple equation that the speed of light is equal to displacement by time and that's 2D divided by pi by n omega that becomes 2D n omega divided by pi. Now it looks very simple after we have done it. I hope uh, this whole animation and video was uh, interesting and useful for you. Thanks and have a great day.